Welcome to the January 19th edition of Hamilton Talks. I am your host, Larry Diani, and Hamilton Talks is a public affairs program that talks to well-known Hamiltonians and Hamiltonians who may not be as well-known, but are also moving the community forward. And I'm very pleased today to be talking to Bobby Asadorian. Bob Asadorian is a handyman here, and expert home renovator. He spent 10 years in construction learning all aspects of home construction and repair. He decided in 2003 to start his own company called Triple R Inc. What distinguishes Bobby as a home repairman is his ability not only to get the job done, but to teach others how to do it themselves. It was this passion and talent to communicate that also led to his varied career as a home improvement contractor, columnist, co-author, book publisher, radio and television show host, volunteer uh, and honorarium with the City of Hamilton as a trade license examiner. And we're very pleased to have Bobby Asadurian on the program today. Welcome, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you for having me today, Larry. Very happy to be here. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled. I've seen your show on TV, <laughs> of course, and you've got, I mean, people accuse me sometimes of having the gift of the gab. You, my friend, have the gift of the gab. You're a very good communicator, and I think uh, you do a, a great job on the program. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll talk about that, but I thought we'd start with uh, just getting to know you a little bit more, Bobby, uh, so that our viewers can appreciate. Are you a, a Hamiltonian, for example? Where yes. were you born? Where were you raised? Where did you go to school? I Tell was, us a little bit I about I was yourself. born and raised in Hamilton. Uh, first home my parents bought, they bought the home when I was one years old. So they bought the home almost 40 years ago. If I give away my age there. <laughs> Canon Victoria, just around the corner from Victoria. Century old home. Uh, my parents weren't very handy, so I had to help out. You know, even as a youngster, you know, times were tough. My parents immigrated from Greece, so a lot of money wasn't there. So anything they could fix around the home, they would fix in the home. I grew up, I went to Dr. Davey, uh, Tweedsmere, and then the high school with Sir John A. McDonald. After that, I did work in sales for some time. And I always had a curiosity. I always wanted to be around people. Did a little bit in sales, no regrets, because even being a contractor, everything is still about sales. So I did enter the construction field. In construction, as I tell you know, uh, co-op students to work with me, you do have to experiment. Maybe you like pounding nails, you want to work with the framers, you can try apprenticing with the electricians. There's so many various trades. Work through them, find something that suits you. In my case, it seemed nothing would suit me. I always had issues with the employers, issues mainly with the way they would deal with the homeowner, deal with the customer. I always felt I could do it better. So after working through all the various trades, flat roof, pitch roof, that was horrible area, especially in the summer. Working with the framers, laying tile with the tile setters. It was around 2003. I'd done this for 10 years and I realized that it's a very good business to be in. You're never going to run out of work. New homes, right off the get-go, quite a lot of flaws. You'll, you'll have a lot of work even in new homes, and I'll look throughout Hamilton. There's old homes everywhere. There's always going to be work. So I realized, and I don't brag to this day, I'm not the best tiler, the best, you know, best plumber, best at putting up the drywall, but I am the best, as you mentioned, about the gift of gab. So that's the one thing that I learned that all the other tradespeople were failing at. Issues with the homeowner. They, they weren't talkative enough. They didn't want to explain. Many would tell me, my bosses, that, Bob, we're not paid to explain. We're not paid to, paid to go over this and over this with the dizzy housewife. We want to get the work done, move on to the next job. So with my gift of gab, I can bring Hamilton homeowners communication skills. It, believe me, you need that in home improvements. Try designing a kitchen, a bathroom, or a basement. You have to go over everything and go over it very carefully. So that well, was my niche right. market in 2003, the communication. Okay, so uh, Bobby, I, this is going to be great, easy for me to interview <laughs> you because all I have to do is ask one question and, and then go, 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 go. <laughs> Which is great. But listen, let, let's, let's uh, just go back a little bit uh, okay. to, your, to your days at Sir John A. Um, and, uh, and living really downtown, Victoria and Cannon. You said, uh, I grew up uh, generations earlier, but not too far east of that, the, the Cannon-Sherman area. And uh, in my day, Hamilton uh, was thriving. The downtown was thriving. Um, I suspect that in your generation as well. Uh, and then there, a turn took. What are some of your memories of living downtown? I have memories. At that time, there was a Dominion. 
and there was a parking lot behind it. Right now, the post office, the Shoppers Drug Mart is there. That's right. Dominion was on the corner of Cannon. And Wellington. And Wellington. Yes. I worked there as a kid. <laughs> my, I lived right around the corner, so my memories are there was a parking lot right behind there uh, playing street hockey. Playing street hockey, playing with friends, not having to worry, being out late. My mom from that parking lot, she'd open the window and she'd be yelling, come home at a certain time. But now with my children, you really, I mean, I'm in a nice area where I am now, but still, it's just not the same. There's too many worries. The world's changed. Back then, the freedom of playing outside, not having to worry, or my parents not having to worry as much about myself and my brother compared to now when you're doing nothing but worrying about the children. It was a much safer place to be. Well, indeed, uh, the life has gotten a little more complicated. And, of course, Sir John A. Macdonald actually was, uh, was built uh, when they closed up as a high school, Central High School, which I used to go to, which no longer exists now, uh, they opened up two new schools, Scott Park School okay. and then Sir John A. Macdonald. Um, Scott Park has now closed, has been closed for a number of years as well, so we're going back a little bit of time. But Sir John A. was an ethnically mixed school yes, yes. right from the get-go. Very much Do you have so. some memories of that? Very fond memories. Sir John A. Macdonald was very important to me. It was, again, it was in the downtown core. It wasn't far. I could simply walk there. I had a lot of friends, a lot of good times. Nothing, nothing bad at all. It was a very, very good high school. Excellent. And of course, now you live out in the East End, in yes, my neck Stony of the Creek. woods, uh, in Stony Creek. And uh, is that where your office is and your workshop is as well? Yes, correct. And so let's talk a little bit about that. But, but let's start it this way, because I have in my hand, and uh, hopefully the camera might be able to pick this up, this is a book uh, that yes. you've authored. It's not the co only book, is it, that you've co-authored? Yes. It's not the only one, is it? Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. So, so tell us why you decided to write a book, and this book in particular. I wanted a chance to give back, and also it works very well with my tie-in with the March of Dimes. There's always been a stereotype, you know, you dumb contractor. So, I mean, first of all, I wanted to prove, yes, I can write. I can co-author and publish a book. But most importantly, my book is very different from other home improvement books. This book is not going to teach you how to put up drywall, how to tile, how to design anything. This book is all about the initial step. You must read the book before engaging the services of a contractor. So this empowers homeowners with the required knowledge to not get ripped off. And I've seen that too much whether it's a phony contractor, whether it's a contractor that's just going to do shoddy workmanship, whether he's not licensed, this book, it's all about the information. This will help homeowners. And even if we can jump to the title, the title of the book is a contractor you can bring home to mom. So again, that's the stereotype because typically mothers, parents, they want their daughters to bring home somebody in a white collar, well, blue in this case, but somebody in a suit. You know, your typical, your a doctor, lawyer, your dentist, doctor, yeah, your, yeah. your lawyer. I want to change all that because, again, there's a lot to be said about the tradespeople, whether it's the Acropolis in Greece, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, whatever it is. There's respectability. Well, the Leaning Tower didn't work out so well. Well, that didn't work out too well. But the point is there's a lot of respect in building, crafting, and creating things that will stand the test of time before they, by the time the contract himself is passed on. These items will still be standing. So if we can get that and get into these young trades some good work ethic, we can clean up the stereotype. And yes, hence, a contractor you can bring home to mom. So the mother and father aren't going to jump out of their seats. All right. Well, you've raised a number of issues there. Let, let's see if we can take some of them one at a time. The issue of the phony contractor yes. or the faulty uh, contractor, uh, what advice have you got for people in that regard? And focus, if you can, generally, of course, but also on seniors. Yes. Because I know that they can be very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. You mentioned seniors. <clears throat> now, about vulnerability... I have some, quite a bit of experience with this. With seniors, it's a matter of being easily available and easily accessible. They're typically not working, they're retired. They're available, they're home during the day. That's why you get the door-to-door -door contractor, which I really don't believe any of them are real, legitimate and licensed, and even the ones that are, they have no business, no business at all, knocking on people's doors with the fraudulent statement of, this is the sale of the day, and you must pay in cash, and we happen to be in the neighborhood working up a block or two. This is an intrusion, this is a violation. If we go back to Ken, Victoria, where I was born, myself, my brother, we've married, we've moved on, my dad's passed on, my mom's living in that home, beautiful home, not the best of area, but she's being solicited all the time. Whether they're calling for uh, gas rates or bothering her for home improvements or renovations, this, this is disgusting and it's deplorable. What's with all these companies that want to 
replace your windows. I get a call almost every week. I got that call last night. There you go. And I get upset because I live in a new home, first of all. The windows are okay for now. But why windows? Can you tell by the ring? Does it ring? Is it a long distance ring? It's, Is it it, it's clearly one yeah, of these yeah. robocalls. Well, no, no, yeah. that's good. So you can tell at least you can avoid it. The problem is, I mean, some are legitimate. I mean, I, I won't paint them all with the same brush. Some are legitimate, <clears> but I believe maybe they need to get some white collar advice and go learn some different marketing because the telemarketing, I, I, don't, I don't think it works for them. I honestly don't believe in that. Secondly, for the ones that go door to door knocking, let's talk for a moment about the legitimate ones. If you're that desperate for work, get a business card or a flyer, leave it in the mailbox. That way the homeowner can get it in due course when they're looking for their mail. Don't knock on the door. Somebody's vulnerable. That's why they brought in the Ontario cooling period. Ten days that if you sign something at your home. But these people, there's nothing to sign. I would say 95% of people knocking at your door, anything to do with improvements, they're phony, they're fraudulent, they're going to take your deposit, they're going to take off. Call the police. Don't sign anything, especially cash. Don't be giving cash to these people at the door. What I like to tell people is, and if I may put this number out on the air, this is City of Hamilton, 546-2424, ask for building and licensing department. This now, whether even if somebody's soliciting you, call the City of Hamilton, find out if they're legitimate business, and even different from that, even when you're contacting contractors and you want quotes to come in, after you've had a few and you've met them, call the building licensing department, ask them if they have a master building repair license. The city's there for you. I, I've dedicated an entire chapter of that in the book. The information's there. Homeowners have to use it. And th but they're too rushy. It takes time to figure it out, to check credentials, to make sure everything's on board. Well, you know, I don't know of too many people, and, and obviously there are some, if people are going door to door, but I don't know of too many people that would accept somebody simply knocking on your door saying we, we happen to fix floors and if you've been thinking of changing your floors that you'll oh, hire them. Many do. Okay, and that's, yeah, no, that's many, disconcerting. It's, it's, it's sad, so, many so, do. So how does one go about selecting the right trade person? Okay, the first thing again is knowledge. It all starts back at that phone number, 546-2424, ask for build, billing and licensing department. Now let's use an example, a bathroom. Tell the city, I'm looking at hiring a contractor to do my bathroom. What does this contractor need? What is the requirement at the city level? The city will tell you clearly. They must have a master building repair license. And yes, if it's a full bathroom renovation, there must be a permit. Now you've got your information. Now call them all in. Get the contractors to come in for the quotes. And I tell people, you're going to have to call in at least 10 just to get two or three that are legitimate. That's how bad Hamilton is. Back when I was doing radio, my Just Ask Bob show on radio, we did statistical studies. 85% of people that call them contractors, and the real ones, some of the biggest firms out there, 85% don't have a license. They're unlicensed. They're rogue. That's how they're running around doing business. So call in 10 trades, get it all in writing, have them quote on everything. Now, what I found, and I get 10 to 20 people I meet with a week because of my show, people call me for help. It turns out many contractors are telling homeowners, untruthfully, you don't need a permit. That is a big, big issue with Hamilton with these renovations because the trades don't want a permit. They, they know for one thing that maybe they're unlicensed themselves, city won't come and inspect, or the city's gonna follow up too much and scrutinize the work they're doing. So people call me all the time and they tell me, contractors told us we don't need a permit, city says we do, Bob, what should we do? I say it should be very obvious, move on. Next, don't hire him. Eliminate the liars. You're going to end up with that list of 10 estimates. Probably two or three are going to be valid. And then, uh, references. Immediately ask these tradespeople, minimum 10 references. I mean, they must have these references. They've been business as long as they're saying they are. The old, the old age um, mentality of ask for three references, that doesn't apply in today's society. They could have a couple of friends vouching as references. Ask for 10 references. If it's a big job and there's a lot of money involved, ask the potential contractor, may I come see some of your past projects? Now, the other final two, which are very critical, commercial liability insurance. Any legitimate proper contractor must have minimum $2 million liability insurance. This is if he damages your home, causes a fire, because don't think you're going to get the money out of him or her, the tradesperson. Secondly is WSIB, Workplace Safety Insurance Board coverage. Again, very, very important because homeowners, they argue with me against this point. They don't want to swallow this bitter pill. But if a tradesperson or contractor is hurt in your home, 
yes, you, the homeowner, are, liable. are ultimately liable, wow. with exception of a WSIB <clears throat> Workplace Safety Insurance Board clearance certificate which shows you the homeowner that his premiums are paid up to the WSIB, they're all good for 60 days. So if the job takes too long, ask for an updated certificate. This way, you're okay if anybody's hurt, you're okay if your home catches fire, is damaged, or even if the neighboring property is damaged in the course of the business. If they've done their due diligence, Larry, and they've checked all of these items, there will be no more renovations well, gone wrong in our community. My goodness, so that means that when I had my driveway done, for example, yes, uh, I didn't ask for any WSIB clearance. If somebody had injured themselves, I would have been liable. That is the majority of people. I would honestly say, again, it's information. People, homeowners must be empowered with the information. Nobody checks. They assume, wow, big machinery, you know, reputable company, huge ad in the yellow pages, they must be okay. We're in troubled economic times. A lot of the, and the bigger, bigger the company doesn't necessarily mean the more stable. It could be the other way around. They may not be paying up their premiums. They may be on their way out of business. Somebody gets hurt. If those premiums aren't paid up, you're on the hook, Larry. Eventually, it'll go through your homeowner's insurance. Right. They sue you. You pass it on to your brokerage. Your insurance covers it. Your premiums go up. Here you are probably maybe a windstorm blew in or damaged the window. You pay for it yourself. You don't want to cause a claim. Now you've got this paving company coming in. You're going to have to put in a claim for them when you didn't for something that you could have that you just went out and fixed yourself. Well, it's not fair amazing. to the homeowner. Listen, you've touched on this already, uh, so I get the point that there are lots of disreputable people out there. You also made the point that there are reputable yes, outfits both, out there. Yes, both, always both. And it's up at buyer beware, I guess. You yes, have to most definitely. figure out who's whom. Uh, but you, you hit the, also the theme of the underground economy. Yes. Paying cash, you mentioned yes. that. Tell us about that. It still doesn't surprise me. I'm on television every week doing the Just Ask Bob on Mondays, again on Thursdays with Hamilton Life. Homeowners still contact me, and very many, many ask to pay cash. No, I, I can't do that. I mean, I didn't do it before TV, and I won't do it now, but many tradespeople will. Now, the homeowner has to understand they're, they're entering into a, a scenario here where nobody's going to protect them. The city won't. They're losing their cooling period for 10 days to cancel because there's nothing to cancel. When you're paying cash and you're avoiding the tax man, you're not getting a typed out performance of what the work's going to be. You're not having a signature. It's all off the radar. If they do good by you, fine. If they don't do good by you, what are you going to do? So, I mean, for one, they're breaking the law, and then they turn around and they want the law to help them when they can end up in trouble themselves. So again, about the tax, I mean, everybody's circumstances are, di are different, but it is very important you pay tax, if for not the simple reason that you're getting a legitimate tradesperson. That's very, very important. Okay, so then let's, let's flip this a little bit. Um, you're a general contractor, yes. which means that you don't do everything. Correct. You have people associated with you who come in and do some of the work, but you do some of the work Only yourself. what I'm not licensed for. All right, so tell yeah, us about I'll that. Yeah, I'll explain my license. In Hamilton, it's called a master building repair. I'm very proud to say that the master building repair, although it's not provincially regulated, I always joke and say that general contractors were not as well regarded by the province because they don't issue us a license. If you're a master electrician or master plumber, your license is at the provincial, le provincial level, and of course you still need one municipally, but all you do is plumbing or all you do is electrical. In my case, you take an examination, you prove you pass on the Ontario Building Code a certain mark, you prove to the city that you have a police clearance and that you have WSIB and insurance. Once you've passed the test, you're issued a master building repair license in Hamilton. Now this covers a lot more than the provincial one for the plumbers and electricians. I can basically do anything inside a home, your kitchen, your bathroom, your roofing, bricklaying, flooring, miscellaneous items. I mean, it runs itself end to end with the exception of three items. Gas work, no. You need a TSSA, which is provincially regulated. Electrical, no. You must be a licensed electrician. And the other is, with an exception, plumbing. My license allows me to replace any plumbing fixture in the home that was there already or lines associated with it. But if you have a room in the home where there was never any plumbing, no. You need the master plumber to bring it in. So in my case, and I'm very proud of this, I am in everybody's homes. I'm just I'm not on television. And then, because I talk about that in my book, Farming Out Jobs. You don't want to hire any contractor that's just a pretty boy that pushes a pencil. And then he sends in all these other companies. Essentially, they have no employees. That's another scam at avoiding um, payroll remittance. 
I have employees, they work hand in hand with me. However, for example, right now we're doing a, a complete kitchen remodel. At this stage, my electricians come in, I've personally pulled for the permit, he's installing the pot lights, he's doing the rewiring, I've opened up the walls anywhere he requires. So for this particular bathroom, uh, kitchen, minor plumbing, I'm licensed, I do it hand in hand with my three employees, do all the other work, the tiling, the floor, the drywall, the painting. My electrician, he comes in as a sub-trade. If, if we can equate it to the medical profession, you won't find a doctor that's a heart surgeon, an knee surgeon, you know, a general doctor. They'll go to your general doctor, which is your family doctor, which you could almost loosely equate that to the general contractor. And if I see we need an electrician, I'll bring mine in, just as opposed to the doctor. If he wants to send you for a heart test, he'll send you to somebody that specializes in that field. Bobby, you, you um, were mentioning to me before, <clears throat> and you mentioned it on your show, that you're called in by homeowners. Yes. Sometimes homeowners that are upset Very at the so. job that was done by the last contractor. What's the, what's the most horrible story that you can relate to in terms of that? Seniors or newcomers to Canada. <clears throat> they are the two largest victims in our community and probably many communities. Again, we touched on seniors for the simple sake that they're available. They're not working. They're home from nine to five or even longer. Newcomers, they're taken advantage of again, I believe because it's easier for the bad contractors because the language skills aren't there. And so what kind of jobs have people done that they oh, had to Oh, well fix? this was horrible and actually this touches base, uh, if I may say, where my aspiration for television started. Back in 2007, the very first time a camera was set on me, Bob Cowan, CH Morning Live. This was a newcomer that had moved to the Stony Creek area, bought a town home, Larry, both husband and wife working six to seven days a week to barely save a little bit of money to put a bathroom in the basement. I mean, times are hard. I, I felt so bad for these people. They hired a contractor who was just a total con artist. They hired him to do the work in the basement. This is one of those cash situations. Now, he would get them to take to go with the husband and wife to Home Depot all the time to pick up building materials. You know, certain things that they wanted to choose, their tile, certain items. So he'd be throwing nails in there, screws in there, tools in there, things they didn't have, things that he needed. What he built for them was a room of mold. That's all he created for them. This bathroom was disgusting. She contacted me. This was before I was on CH. I went in and looked at it. The sad thing is the money that these poor people set aside to pay this contractor, loosely I call him a contractor, they had to pay me about 60% more because look, to, fix to fix it up. I had to, it, mold was growing like, 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 a, like a furry carpet everywhere. So I said that was my closing remark to Bob Cowan on CHCH Morning Live that nothing is worse with the exception of people getting hurt. Nothing is worse than having to pay for it twice. Absolutely. Disgusting. Absolutely. And uh, what drove your passion to get into this business, uh, Bobby? Again, I have to go back to the chattiness, to the communicating. Larry, I, I could go on for hours about what the bosses would tell me, you know, behind the scenes about the homeowners, the little rip-offs, the things they would cover up in the wall. I mean, I was just an employee. Well, I would get sick of it, I'd leave and move on to the next one. That's why another basis for the book is by reading my book, you'll really know what the tradespeople are doing in your home while you're at work. So my whole idea of it was, I can slow down and teach people, draw them into what I'm doing. I'm the type of contractor that when you come home from work, I'll still be there. You can call me, I'll come on a Saturday, I'll explain what I found in the wall. I'll explain some options, some alternatives. So a big point of it was that I knew I could do it better, I could do it different, and it is a business that's sustainable. Whether troubled economic times or good times, there's always going to be work for me. I don't have to worry. I'll be able to put food on the table and I'll also be able, as I've branched out with the Just Ask Bob now, it very much pleases me to teach people, even if it's the cost of me losing some jobs because I'm teaching Hamilton homeowners, that's a passion. I love teaching. Well, I think that's a public service. And uh, <clears throat> finally, Bobby, uh, I mentioned in the intro that you're a tri trade license examiner for the city. Yes. It's an honorarium that you receive for that. That means you certify people going out yes. into the field, right? Correct. But you're also involved, and you've got to be very quick with this, 
with the March of Dimes. Yes. What's that all about? The March of Dimes, Trevor Bouchard, co-author of my book, he's always had a tie-in with the March of Dimes. His company every year, whether it's a golf tournament or whatnot, they raise funds for the March of Dimes. It was my idea to write the book. I knew I needed a co-author. He's very much white collar. I'm a little bit of a mix, white and blue. But the book essentially is both, both ends of the spectrum, white and blue when it comes to educating homeowners on home improvements. So we decided at that point to tie in with the March of Dimes every cent for this book. This book costs me $2.80 a book because unlike other charities, I don't deduct the printing. Exactly what it says, 1840 on the back, goes to March of Dimes. So the couple of dollars to print it, me and Trevor, we just chalk that up to an expense and every cent goes to the March of Dimes because I've done work for the March of Dimes. I was subbed in back when I was with other tradespeople and I would see how people wait up to five years to get an accessibility project. You know, whether it's widening the doorways, doing something in the home to get into the bathroom to access it, the book will help, well, even a small Bobby, amount. Bobby, listen, you're a good guy, really enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank the you. half hour has gone by so quickly. Wow. Thank you very much. We've been in conversation uh, with Bobby Asadorian, Just Ask Bob. Uh, we did print the uh, website on the screen, and uh, the initial one, we've corrected it now. Uh, it's uh, www.rrinc.ca triple r standing for repair, repair rebuild, rebuild and, renovate. and renovate thank you bobby Asadurian. thank you join us next week we're going to be talking with chris Kessler and the market the hamilton market you're right see you then